And on this episode of DIY Fishing with Todd, we'll be showing you how to be more successful out there on the water. So here we are out on Lake Roosevelt, setting the side pointers out. You can see I'm walking back the uh, pointer boards there. There's a picture of the reels I'm using. You can see that white stopper. That's how you get them to stop going out. So you'll see that left side I stopped it, and the right side I stopped it, and then they start planing out better. So as you're setting up your side planers, you let out how much of a line you want. Today we're we'll reusing 100 feet pretty successfully. Started with no weight. A little later I'll show you where we use some weight. I have this chicken catcher, which I use to reach over and grab my side planer line. And then I attach my side planer clip to the line. And then I just let out some more line and walk it out the side planer. So this is my taller pole that I set further out. You can see I'm hooking up the inside rod and making sure to go underneath that taller forward pole. So my back rod sits a little lower in angle and underneath that front pole. Okay, so one of the questions you get asked is how do you know if there's a fish on? So you can see here the water's pretty choppy here. We actually got a lot of action going on. The poles are gonna move a little bit when that's happening. Every time you hit a wave and that side planer line tightens, those poles move but it's completely different as you'll see here in a second when a fish actually hits it a lot more erratic so here you'll see that pulls pretty steady and the water's calmed down quite a bit now and then that pole just starts going crazy that's how you know there's a fish there now your other poles on that same side planer will shake a little bit but it's usually pretty obvious which one has the fish on it you can see here this one pulled the fish line uh, right out of the clip so i was fighting the fish right off and I was holding it here to the side because I do have a rod out the back there as well. So I'm playing that between my outside rod and my back rod. And eventually we move that back rod over. Because this was the inside rod, it was pretty easy to keep it untangled. You just play the fish. The outside one's going to stay outside. Not a problem. So once we get the fish netted here, what I'll do is just reset the line and I can replace that inside rod. So here you can see what happens. Rod shaking. It didn't pull out of the clip, so Bill pulls it out of the clip, quickly tightens up the slack, and then reels in the fish. Nice little kokanee there for us. We had an 18, a 20, and a 14. Again here, that's the outside rod that goes, and so you wonder, how does that not get tangled? That fish pulled it out of the clip, and then you just play the fish to the back of the boat. That outside rod's just slightly further back than that inside rod, because of the angle of the side planer. And so when that fish is pulling tight, you just let them pull it back around that line. Here you'll see another hit on that outside line. It took us a minute to recognize it and get back there. Pull it out of the clip, fight the fish right to the middle of the boat. You can see we did not tangle with that back inside rod. To the keen observer here, you can see I've got a, about a three quarter ounce dropper weight there. Later in the day, we went a little deeper for the fish. Another one on the outside, pull it out of the clip. If that fish is really tugging when you get that pole in your hand, sometimes just slow down. Let him wear himself out just a little bit before you really reel in hard. Hey everyone, I'm looking for more subscribers, so make sure you tell everybody you know to get them to subscribe. Check out this nice chunky rainbow we ended the day with.